Yeah. Um, there, there were a lot of people online uh, saying, like, I can't believe the way that she's continuing to live or like being like in the festival crowd, like kind of like grimy and stuff like you're going to get an infection. Like if I bubble wrap myself and I become only taking care of my cancer, then it's like Madison already died in that process. I'm like, that's mm. not I don't want that. Madison, welcome to The Squeeze. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Oh my gosh, this is like so fun. We're honored to have you, truly. So for our lemon drops that um, are kind of confused what is going on and how this whole situation happened, um, Madison ended up putting up this TikTok of a bucket list video of everything she wanted to do. And you guys literally tagged us like it was your job oh yeah. i was tagged in this video so many times and actually had a lot of friends send it to me like really? it really popped up but actually my friend started sending it to me after we had already reached out but um the world was making sure that we knew it was, that's yeah. for sure crazy i don't really know what i had expected but like I it was definitely like um just a match made like people the people wanted to see this happen oh my gosh yeah I, mean, I love that we're giving it to them I just I'm curious we weren't planning this but were what were you expecting when you like first put out that video like anything <laughs> um honestly I no, I wasn't expecting anything to really come from it yeah. a lot of my TikTok is me just like wanting to document things for like my family and just like for me to look back on. And so I had kind of ran the idea off like one of my loved ones. I was like, what if I posted a bucket list? And they had kind of joked like, that'll like, you'll definitely get some like people are good. They'll like that. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. We'll see. And so putting it out there, I, I didn't expect the response that it got, which was so in the best way amazing and overwhelming and crazy and like it like changed my life for the better immensely mm -hmm. just insane so cool i feel like every time i like look back on it it like had another million views yeah. <laughs> like what the next day i was like oh well and let's have comments. three million more yeah. yeah yeah just the consistent like squeeze 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 tailors and i was like this is so cool yeah. Like, yeah it was i mean honestly it was an honor like for us to be tagged in it that people you know would even think of us yeah yeah, yeah. No, genuinely and like on my end that felt so comforting and like reassuring knowing that you, all of your audience and like your supporters were so like this is a good person for you mm. to meet and like it was just the most heartwarming thing. And that's really what I wanted to happen was to just organically find a podcast that like I felt like really safe and comfortable like sharing yeah. my story with. And like, that's you guys. Oh so my here gosh. we are. Yeah, I know. We're just oh, yeah. so honored. So honored and just so excited. And I think this episode is gonna help a lot of our listeners, but also it's honestly probably the most special one that we've done yet. I would say so. Truly. We are very honored to have you here. Okay, so if you guys are watching this episode right now, you may notice we are not in our normal studio. You may. I would say this is a little nicer than <laughs> our studio. Yeah, our studio is nice, but this is this is a pretty special we place. We're at Calamigos Ranch. Uh, this property is just insane, and they have been so lovely. They put Madison up. How is your how has your stay been here? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Shout out Calamigo. <laughs> <laughs> this place is wild. It like, really is. Every yeah. single person that we've interacted with has been the nicest, most accommodating individual in the world. Yeah. Like everything has been like service with a smile, which like I used to work in customer service. That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah. Just so accommodating. So nice. Like you're able to just like text people here and be like i need this and they just yeah it's like magic yeah <laughs> we're at disney they, yeah <laughs> this place is crazy they, they do have disney magic it's, and right. the fact that like you feel like you're not like in la right now oh, we like were it's hype and <laughs> that sounds yeah. like yeah. um it's no, its own little like oasis if you like f like because whenever you fly into lax it's so busy hectic crazy and then this is like an oasis yeah it is so just like in the most beautiful little pocket yeah. and yeah. just a sprawling, gorgeous property. 
that cares about people. It's cool. Yeah. yeah. It. They, the team at Calamigos was so kind. Um, oh, and we, really we told to them about it. this episode and then we were filming it and they were like, oh my gosh, we'd love to like have her. And they've just because been. Because going back to, first of all, thank you for traveling across the country. Oh yeah, that's to true. To be oh, here for people that don't know that <laughs> literally from across the country. Um, but when we were talking about like where we wanted you to be when you were here, it was a very easy answer. Yeah. We love this place. This is like our second home to us. It's like our family. Um, so we were so excited to be able to have you here and they were, you know, were so kind to help facilitate that. But, um, yeah, they, they were honestly, I was texting with everybody and they were like, Oh, we're so excited to meet her. Yeah. This place feels like home, which is like so weird, but it yeah. just, it feels so, so yeah, cozy. Really That's so nice. So we figured it'd be a good place to film our episode too, just yeah. to keep the, keep the Migos magic yeah. so alive we'll be here for the day. We will be here on Fun my times. couch. Um, we start each episode off with a little game called Stitcher Scott Real. Our jar has made it to Calamigos. Yes. From and our sign. From our, and, our old sign. And our sign, yeah. <laughs> made its way here. Um, so yes, if you could pull one of those random questions. Oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna give you a drum roll. This is like also a bucket list thing. This is very <laughs> <laughs> exciting. All right. Oh no. Right, <laughs> What song will always get you out on the dance floor? Ooh. Oh, oh, uh, anything by Flume. Okay. Oh, anything yeah. by Flume uh, will like get me on the dance floor. Um, but like, I'm like just a basic white woman. Also, the cha cha slide. <laughs> <laughs> flume, cha cha slide. slide. Yeah. Oh, I'll, yes. Like, put my Crush whole into, like my whole heart goes into the cha cha slides. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh well, loves a wedding. <laughs> Mine would be loves a wedding. Mine would be like Fergie or like a 2000s Disney anything like Hannah Montana oh. Cheetah Girl like any right. anything right. like that. That was very fitting. High School you. Musical. You do love your Fergalicious. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you do love your like cheetah girls and all all of those different things. Yeah. Do you have them? Um You're not really a dance floor goer. I'm not the biggest, but if it's something, it's probably Backstreet Boys. I was gonna say it's probably tequila. Okay. But it's probably <laughs> tequila. <laughs> That's my brother's karaoke song. Oh. And it's it's four words. It's just tequila four times. Oh my gosh. Like the whole tequila. Song. That's like that guy on AGT. Have you seen that video? Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he does the karaoke. He just says oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but if like everybody starts yeah. playing, you'll see me on the dance floor. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, we have a lot of stuff we want to dive into. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I think it would be cool to start. I mean, even for us, just to like learn more about you, where you're from, where you're raised, all, yeah. like, all those details. <laughs> all the details for sure. Um, so my name is Madison. I am 26. Um, I was actually, I was born in Cali. Um, oh. Not really from here, though. Okay. My parents were in the military. Okay. So I went to 13 schools between like kindergarten and graduating. Holy so crap. went all over growing up. Um, and yeah, I guess um, in my like adult life, I attended college in Maryland. I went okay. to grad school for a semester in Florida before I dropped out. <laughs> um, and then I became a teacher. Oh my gosh. And um, I had to quit teaching due to just getting like a surprise cancer diagnosis, which yeah. was crazy. Um, I feel like prior to life on TikTok and cancer, I was a very, very, very just like average girly like yeah everybody else and um just kind of everything got like rocked and crazy yeah. and so yeah yeah um okay so I would like to kind of start back to when you kind of had I guess your first symptom like when yeah. did you I mean you probably didn't know something was wrong but you were experiencing something yeah I so I can whole diagnosis story if we want because it's it's yeah. crazy um, what year was that so that was the first symptom was in i don't know i think it was it was bonnaroo of 2022 it was 2022 so um i was at bonnaroo and oh. it was um the summer between my first year of teaching and then going back to school yeah. and um i it was a girl's trip with me and like three of my best girlfriends we had went uh to the music festival and 
I am an experienced festival girl. Another mm. thing that was on my bucket list was that like I wanted to be in a DJ booth. Yes. I no, don't know what to do, but like I should yeah. be a hype woman. Yeah. And that's what I want. <laughs> it seems <laughs> like you had some offers. Oh, we can get into that. Too. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can talk about Plenty. that. Plenty. Yeah. But um, yeah, so we were we were at Bonnaroo, pretty seasoned festival people. Like we we knew the kind of ins and outs of like grimy fest going. Like yeah. we know the rules about like how to drink water, like staying hydrated, all that kind of stuff. And Bonnaroo had been we had a run for our money that year. Um, there was like a tornado on site. Like it was it was a crazy year. And mm. so um our camp had like gotten destroyed by a tornado and stuff we had went through everything at this festival and we really just wanted to like chill and like enjoy and so the girlies like it's a girl's trip we're getting turned and stuff and drinking and having a good time so day two or three of the festival um my friends were just they were all able to they were still partying and like trucking along and stuff and normally i'm right there with them Uh like it's very just like fun vibes and i had like the most random stomach pain that I had ever had in mm. my life. Um, I don't know how like TMI we want to get, get into or, it. Like this is like, maybe, like so yucky. <laughs> so sorry. This is like gross. <laughs> but like it was um like just like a cramp sensation yeah. of like, ooh, like I like need to go to the bathroom. And um it, it was this recurrent or recurring cramping sensation that it started happening and i was just like okay it's we've we've been like through a tornado we've been through, like we've been drinking we've been like doing all this stuff yeah. <laughs> i'm dehydrated yeah um i was i was getting sick um i was not on any party favors or anything like that but i, I just kept throwing up and i was my stomach just kept randomly hurting um and i i will always remember the first stomach ache because it was at stevie nicks's set stevie nicks was closing out bonero and my best friend and I were in the crowd. And she, before she had like started this set, she was like, there is, I can sense some magic in the air tonight. Cause she's totally like cool witchy vibes. Yeah. And she was like, there is magic in the air tonight. Like we are casting a spell on Tennessee, like just using like all of this, like very witchy vernacular. And, stuff. and we were like, this girl is cool. <laughs> like she's so cool. She's like, I'm going to put a, like, I'm going to enchant the crowd. And it was like, two minutes after she said that she was going to like enchant the crowd that I got that first really bad stomach ache that I was like, Ooh, <laughs> what is this? So the running joke is that like Stevie oh. Nicks hexed me, which is like not true. Oh, and like, no gosh. Stevie slander, like love her, <laughs> love the music, Fleetwood back fan. But um, yeah, that was, uh, that was the very first stomach ache. And then I went a year with these stomach aches. Mm. Um, whenever I was 25 at the time, I guess I was 24 on the first stomach ache. Um, but whenever you're you're a woman, uh, or female bodied at least, I feel like it's so often um that our stomach aches and just any pains that women experience are so kind of brushed off as it has to be anything else. Like yeah. people told me, like, maybe you're going through a second puberty, maybe you're like, oh, you're just you're ovulating, you're, you know, maybe you are. I, I don't know. Everybody that I would consult with just said that it was like something else. And I hadn't seen a medical professional because teaching it's it's I was so busy. I yeah. was yeah. teaching full time and I was a nanny after school. So I wow. was working from wow. 7 a.m. until like 7 p.m. Gosh. Um, and I was I was grinding and I didn't mind it. I was having so much fun. Love the kids. I was nannying. And stuff. So I just never really thought to go to the doctor because I thought that it was something I could manage, figure out, control. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was also at the time of the internet, a lot of, um, a lot of hot girls have tummy issues yeah. Yeah. content going around, <laughs> like, um, everywhere. It was on Twitter, on TikTok, on Instagram, everywhere. The hot girls have stomach issues. Hot girls have tummy aches. Hot girls have whatever, <laughs> yes. IBS. And so I was like, maybe I'm just having a glow up. <laughs> 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 and so I Club. just didn't think it was anything <laughs> um, until I started. Uh, I, I cut out um, I cut out wheat for a while. Like I cut out gluten. I cut out dairy. I cut out red meat. I incorporated more red meat. I incorporated more fruits and veggies. Wow. I went vegan. I tried everything, everything thinking yes. that's like, yeah, this was somehow like self aidable. Like I could help. Right. Yeah. And um, and it just didn't. And I do believe that had. I not been so um like 
just so invested in like getting started as like a little career girly and getting so like I don't know just caught up in life and like had paid attention to um like how serious this was and have I feel like I gaslit myself for a while on my symptoms yeah. like into thinking that it was a lot of other stuff mm. um and they kind of reached a peak when it, we're coming up on the one year anniversary I was diagnosed um stage four metastatic adenocarcinoma colon primary really big fancy term wow. for terminal colon cancer um on february 24th okay and so it was um like i said after a year of kind of brushing symptoms aside thinking it was everything else um a different friend group and i were having a beach day and i remember um you know i, I hadn't weighed myself since high school because I don't know. You just don't want to. I yeah. just hadn't weighed myself since high school. Yeah. And I, I really worked on having a really healthy relationship with food. Um, That was always something really important to me. And so I wanted to have a healthy relationship with my body because I didn't always have that. Yeah. yeah. And um, I remember because I live in Florida getting ready for the beach and being like, I have lost some weight. It was like the first beach day of the year. And I was like, I've lost some weight. And it was at my friend's house. And I, I was just curious because they own a scale. I didn't own a scale. And I stepped on my friend's scale. And the number was like what I weighed in high school. Mm. And I was like, I've lost 50 pounds over the course of a year. But if, whenever it's over the course of a year, 52 weeks, that's yeah, less than a pound a week. That's, like a, that. yeah. Yeah. that's like a healthy amount of weight loss. Yeah. And so I didn't notice it because it was yeah. about a pound a week, maybe. It was gradual. Yeah, it was so gradual. But seeing seeing that number um, was just like, Jarring. dude, that's crazy. Um, we went to the beach and I remember just being so unable to, I couldn't drink. I couldn't hang out the way that I wanted to. I just had like it was so low energy and this was president's day weekend. And that was on the Sunday, Monday, everybody had off president's day and I had a teacher training to attend and teachers know this. Like you always want to get out of the teacher trainings. And I remember <laughs> being in this like career, like this mandatory class and just feeling like I had gotten hit by a bus. Like the lights were too bright. I was just, I was ill. And I went home early. So scared that people were going to be like, oh, she was sick because it's just, it's taboo to leave those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, and I was so just trying to like push through. And I thought, you know, this is kind of like cold and flu season and I work with kids and like yeah. one of these kids had to have gotten me sick. I was really kind of like mad at the kids. It was like, one of you came in here, <laughs> some dirty fingers yeah. and whatever. But so um, pushed through that day. Tuesday, I went to school and it was the hardest day physically of my entire life wow. because the stomach aches were just consistent and constant and like it would ease up for like two seconds and then it would be back full throttle. And I remember my kids getting so excited because when I say my kids in my classroom, getting so excited because I turned off all the lights and I was like, we have to do a movie today. Oh. And they were like, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, they're eating that up. Best teacher ever. <laughs> yeah. And so just like random movie day. Um, but I remember putting the movie on for them and calling the school nurse, um, Nurse Sandy. I'm like, I need you to come down to my classroom right away. And she's like, for a kid and I was like no it's for me I mm. can't teach um and so I I I just physically was not able to and um my my love had kind of been pushing me like hey like babe we should maybe go get you checked out like it started to kind of be more apparent that the stomach aches were consistent um he happened to have that day off I got home from work or from work I left early and I remember too telling my principal I was like I have to leave work early today. And she's like, you don't have a sub. And I was like, I'm sorry. Wow. And it was kind of a thing. But um, so I left work early. We went to urgent care. Um, again, thinking that it was just like a stomach bug. Yeah. Go to urgent care. And um, I told her my symptoms. It's just like consistent cramping. I've lost some weight. I'm having like some light sensitivity. I'm so tired constantly. It wasn't a normal tired either. It was like, just fit like you're exhausted yeah. yeah I remember the other teachers being able to um we have you know planning hour and stuff whenever the kids would be at like PE or recess I remember they were all planning and I had a pillow that I kept secret in my classroom because wow. I, I couldn't get through the day and I thought that I was maybe experiencing even like teacher burnout yeah. just like at this young age and um 
it was, yeah, so went to, we went to urgent care. And I remember at urgent care, the nurse told me, you know, I told her all my symptoms. And she was like, I can't see you at urgent care because I think you have cancer. What? <gasps> yeah, like at urgent care immediately. That was crazy to hear. And I was like, okay, not, <laughs> this was not the world's nicest urgent care either. So Oof. I was like, this girl, like maybe doesn't like, no, she, I, I don't know. I just didn't want to believe her. And you think it's everything else. I can't believe that. <laughs> oh, yeah. At urgent mm. care. It was the urgent care nurse. And I mean, I, I had even convinced myself that I had like a worm in my system. And yeah. I would yeah. joke with my friends and be like, you want to name the worm? Because like that, ha it, it has to be something else. Yeah. yeah. But the week before I had started to, I think somehow I knew before anything else. Really? But I had started to like subliminally joke like, th this is like morbid and but it, whatever. I was like, what if? if I have cancer like oh my god imagine like if it's that oh wow which isn't a joke but I mean I I just had kind of started to get like not even I really did think that I was joking and then yeah. I went in and they were like this is not a joke like this is yeah wow so I remember what going into the yep yeah, went to the urgent care they gave us like a fast pass slip for the ER it was crazy because I was still able to like stand and like my endurance was decent. I didn't have any breathing issues or anything. So going to like the ER, looking very like just healthy and normal, yeah. being like, hey, we think I have cancer um, and getting, you know, brought back to the room. And it ended up being like the craziest 10 days spent in the hospital that I just wasn't really? anticipating. You never left. No. You stayed there for those 10 days. Yeah. The whole 10 days I was there. It oh, was. Wow. Yeah. It was wild. It was like locked in there. And it Jeez. was it was crazy. I think honestly too, that's um I sometimes feel also if I talk too much, I'm so sorry. But no, like, no. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I sometimes feel very guilty because um I, I have a lot of women who ask me, you know, how how do I advocate to myself for my doctor? How do I tell my doctor I mm -hmm. think that there's something wrong? Uh -huh. And I have this guilt that I carry because I didn't advocate for myself. And so I really don't know what to tell people. I'm working on it and trying to like help. But I think the only thing I can do is share my story and let that be like a cautionary tale yeah. that that you you need to take whatever's going on in your body. Like you need to take it seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously it's just words, but yeah, you do not hold any of that guilt. <laughs> you sharing your story and doing this right now is going to help a lot of people. Thank you. For sure. Just in that alone. I hope so. Yeah. Like, well, it I, already has. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, already what you've done on yeah. social media has definitely already affected a lot of people's lives. Makes my heart warm. <laughs> cool. With spring right around the corner, I normally like to take this time to reset, whether that's updating my wardrobe or my bedding, or decor around the house. And even though we live in LA, we still have those occasional cold, dark, rainy days. And luckily, my bedding doesn't have to match that vibe, thanks to Brooklinen's limited edition color launch. With Brooklinen's new sheet patterns inspired by the colors of nature, it's easy to bring the energy of spring into your bedroom. We have been loving our new Brooklyn and Move-In bundle bedding set that includes literally everything that you can need for your bed. We're talking fitted sheets, flat sheets, pillowcases, duvet cover, comforter, and two pillows. Our Brooklyn and sheets make us feel like we're staying at our favorite hotel with their hotel quality sheets. It's really so comfortable and gives us such a high quality night of sleep every single night. I just love a good sheet and these sheets are it. To embrace a spring refresh with Brooklinen's Home Essentials, visit in-store or online at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com and use code The Squeeze for $20 off your order of $100 or more. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com and use promo code The Squeeze for $20 off. I absolutely love this next sponsor. And no, it's not just because of their name, uh, which I mean, truly is the perfect sponsor. And I know by now you guys have heard me talk a lot about squeeze.com, but I'm truly so passionate about their juice cleanse. If you're a little skeptical, like I was starting it, I can happily say that it is definitely not as scary as it sounds because when I first heard juice cleanse, I was terrified. With squeeze.com, you can choose from a one to seven day long cleanse that includes five different flavors of juice a day. My favorite is the coconut, pineapple, spinach, and apple one. 
The juices not only taste great, but are also so good for you. After my cleanse, I definitely notice clearer skin and less bloating. Um, whenever I do juice cleanses, I always just feel clean from the inside out. Um, and there's truly no greater feeling than that. Squeeze.com helped me start my health focused New Year's resolution off right. If this is something that you're interested in or even just curious about, I highly encourage you to visit squeeze.com for more details and make sure to tell them that we sent you. For same day local delivery or free fast delivery nationwide, you can use code the squeeze at checkout. Um, that's code the squeeze. So when you go to the ER, they like run some tests on you. Dude, the ER was the craziest experience of my like entire life. And so a little more backstory on me. I was n I'm not a medfield girl. I, like you're you're an RN. I have no no concept of yeah. medicine. I had never even like watched Grey's Anatomy or anything. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so going into the ER, um, they did they took some blood work and then they I don't know if they were what they were looking for in my blood work, but they uh they didn't see anything that weird. So whatever comes back in my blood work now they weren't looking for it then mm. they're like your blood looks okay we're gonna do a ct scan and so i remember well wow, there wasn't anything in your blood so there it's there is but i don't think that's what they were checking for at the time oh, okay, like they okay. didn't run a tumor marker check okay it was just like a standard blood work procedure yeah and you had to like call in for a tumor marker procedure interesting now like in hindsight we know um I don't want to get it wrong. It was my CA-19-9 marker. That is a tumor marker. Yeah. Normally a marker for pancreatic cancer, but I don't have that. Um, and I really, I just want to make sure that I do have the information right, if that's okay. Yeah. But so I am still not a trained medical professional. So do not yeah. take this as like, <laughs> like hard, fast, true medical advice. <laughs> but from, from my understanding, as somebody who, like I said, had no experience in the medical field, your CA-19-9 marker is supposed to be between zero and 36.9. I don't know what that means yeah. at all, but that's what it's supposed to be. Okay. At 37, you're supposed to get a cancer screening because mm -hmm. that means like you're off. Mine was 214. Holy. Yeah. So we didn't we didn't know that because they didn't look for tumors. That's like hindsight. We knew about that. Um, but at the time they said, you know, your blood work looks standard. We're going to do a CT scan to figure out what the stomachache issue is. And so... They took me back, did the CT scan, and they said, there's something compressing your large intestine. I was like, well, I don't know what. And they were like, well, have you swallowed anything weird recently? Like, they couldn't see it. I was yeah. like, no. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, has, they, they were just doing all like the standard like protocol, like yeah. has like, anything weird been like, I don't, I don't know. They were just like, what, what did you put inside your body? And yeah. I was like, nothing. I didn't do it. Like, this, not me. <laughs> and um, I remember they were just like, they showed me the pictures um, and you could just see that like my large intestine was squished down and they described it to me like a garden hose. So your intestine system is just supposed to like flow regularly. Yeah. And then you have like, so gross, but then like, your output. Yeah. yeah. And um, there, there was something constricting my large intestine, but they didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And so they thought, too, that it was like anything else. Um, but they, they wanted to keep me overnight, do a proper PET scan, and then do what, like whatever else they needed to do. They did wanted to do a colonoscopy, too. Mm -hmm. um, and then laparoscopy. But so I just I remember going in. And fi finding out that there was something like messing with my intestine. And the very first thing that he had said after he said there was something on your intestine, he was like, we have to treat it like cancer until we can prove otherwise. Mm. So yeah. right off the bat, I'm in the ER, like being told again, this could be cancer. Yeah. And they like, called my friend, like my best friend, like, girl, <laughs> we might have a situation. And <laughs> um, we did. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, going in and I had... A million doctors and nurses. It was crazy. I'd never even been into a hospital before. I didn't. Oh, wow. I didn't even realize that until Sheesh. I was in there for the first time. Like, oh, I've never even really been here. Oh, wow. oh, wow. Um, just I'd always been like, I don't know, healthy and like yeah. kind of just like a brush it off person. Yeah. Um, and 
yeah, I there were people doing clinicals and people like every type of like doctor and like their residency. Everybody wanted to know because yeah. you look at me and like you're just seeing this like normal looking 25 yeah. year old woman who has something insane going on in her digestive tract that we don't know about. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I remember waiting so long for the GI doctor. I just wanted to talk to the GI because I thought at the time I was following Tess Komen and her story. Um, mm. She's the uh, she was a writer for Delish. Uh, she, she has Crohn's and she shares publicly her story with Crohn's okay. and how um, she's married to a GI doctor. And so I was just like, that was like my only hope. And like the only bit of medical knowledge I knew was like, be nice to talk to a GI person. Yeah. And he came back and he said, um, yeah, I, I see. I see the mask, too. We're going to do, you know, the proper screenings and stuff. And I was like, do you think it's cancer? And he was like, he looks at me and he goes, could I wake up tomorrow morning? And I will never forget the sentence. He said, could I wake up tomorrow morning and see a zebra in my front yard? Yes. Am I going to? No. And I was like, same page, man. Understood. Like this has to be IBS or crumbs or something. And the next day, um, I, because of how compressed my, um, my large intestine was called or it was causing my colon to like swell up big mm. and um they're like you have to have surgery like immediately for this basically like i found out the same day that i was gonna have to have surgery mm-hmm. we didn't know what we were gonna find in surgery though they still weren't doing they still like i said they had to treat it like cancer in case it was but they they still didn't know and weren't convinced and neither was i that it was cancer yeah and i remember calling all my family and stuff you know, this is what's gonna happen he I was laying on my bed and my surgeon came back to the room. Um, shout out Dr. Pachoka and sat on the bed with me um, going over everything. And he handed me a clipboard and I had to sign off on a potential colostomy bag. And I was like, I don't want to sign this off. I do not want to do this. And he was like, I realized that like it's kind of protocol though. Like it'll like this could save your life. And I'm like, I don't know. And so I go in for surgery I kept getting pushed back and it was so late it was like 9 p.m finally I go back for surgery thinking that like we're gonna I don't know they're just gonna see some stuff and I'll be okay um I come out of surgery and it is so late and they I'm back in my room and uh I remember putting like my hands in my stomach and feeling plastic Mm -hmm. and I was like holy like oh my gosh I, <laughs> I I couldn't look like I could not look at my stomach. I didn't want to because I like I knew mm. um, and I, I hadn't had any conversations yet with anybody because I was on like I was on a morphine drip. There was a lot going on yeah. in this yeah. hospital room. Um, but uh, I, I guess what had happened, though, and how they ended up finding the cancer was during the surgery. And they didn't think that they were going to find that. I didn't even know that like you could see cancer. But basically, like while they were in operating on my stomach, trying to figure out the what was going on with my um intestine yeah. they were just able to see cancer and turns out that it was a bunch of tumors compressing my large intestine down and that was what was causing the stomach aches and everything else because anytime i would eat anything now my large intestines narrowed so food's having a hard time yeah. passing through Got it. and so every time it would pass through it would cause me to cramp wow. and so that's what was causing everything um and it's like still there my like oh, those tumors are still there they can't touch them or anything because they could like I don't know how cancer works 100% that they could spread or something crazy could happen. Um, still there, my little pet. And <laughs> it's like gross, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that's kind of the diagnosis story. And it was it, it was crazy um, being told that I had cancer. That was insane. Yeah. Yeah, what and, was that like? Yeah, that was, I was... I was in the room, still not very convinced that I had cancer. Before I tell this story, though, I want everybody to know I'm on my family's side in this story. Right. I vouch for them, and I'm okay with the decisions and choices they made. This is a, People get a little finicky on how they feel about this story. Yeah. But so, that, like I said, the surgery had kept getting pushed back. And so it was night. It was so late. And um, my mom... Or my, um, who was it? I think I, the surgery had just finished and my partner was in the waiting room and it was just us because it was just us in Florida. And the the doctor came out, told my partner and he was already on the phone with my mom. My Mm. mom made 
the doctor's promise because I was still under. She was in, um, I had listed her, my partner both as like my, yeah, they can have the information. And um, she immediately, she she was like, do not tell her tonight. Like let her have one more night of just like peaceful sleep. Um, Because it was, it was so late. It was like midnight, 1 a.m. when I came out. Yeah. And some people really disagree with that and think that it's like a bad move. I kind of think it was like the episode of New Girl where like everybody knew Cece was pregnant except Cece. Mm. <laughs> um, but so, yeah, so everybody else actually knew before me. And I'm honestly happy it went that way because I never had to have cancer alone, really. Right. Um, so I remember my mom being like, hey, I'm I'm flying in, you know, and I was just like, that's nice because I have like all this stuff co- like going on. Mom flew in, uh, partner's parents flew in, all of my friends, like my friend group were just like regularly checking on me. I was actually supposed to go to a music festival like two days later, oh, wow. didn't end up attending. <laughs> but um, So I had like all my festival friends that came and see, like saw oh. me. And um, yeah, so the, the next day goes around and I was chipper. Like I was kind of in a good mood with everybody there. And I'm like, oh, like all my friends and family are here. Like I'm sick, but it's kind of a party and um so rare that you like just like have everybody in the room and the surgeon came in and I was just like I'm I'm a Libra and I was just like being silly and like he was dressed to the nines like he was not in doctor clothes <laughs> and he came in and I was like look at this handsome man and uh he like came and like sat on the end of my bed and I just I don't know I kind of joke when I'm nervous and I was like I literally I said this to him. Oh my gosh. I was like, if you're gonna sit in the bed, like you at least have to buy me dinner. Cause like I knew he was oh. gonna, I knew he had bad news, but like I was just yeah. like trying to prolong you're it. Make, like, yeah. Joking. Yeah. He laughed and stuff. But um <laughs> <laughs> so funny. But no. Um, so he uh it was all my family around me and one random friend also in the room. And he just like in like a very loving way. And he and I have such like a really good relationship of now. I I really wow. have so much respect for this doctor. Uh, but he like kind of like just put his hand on my knee and he was like, um, you you have cancer. And I was like, no. And he was like, I looked at my mom and I was like, I have cancer. And I remember it was oh, <laughs> I cry. It was, it was a lot. It was weirdly a feeling of relief to know like, okay, like this is this is what life's going to be like now. But it was also a feeling of like, I don't know, I never got doom or like Mm. terror or anything. I cried like immediately, but it wasn't from a place of like, like fear. It was from a place of just. I think the discourse that surrounds the word cancer and like now that's a sign to me I was just like it was almost more of like an overwhelming cry um but I remember asking him like what stage Mm. he was like four I was like dude (laughs) there's just no winning (laughs) uh, (laughs) and uh we we still didn't know what kind it was and um but yeah he he was able to say like it's stage four cancer we don't know what it is um, but it's like all over your stomach. It's everywhere. I remember those words so clear. He was like, it's everywhere. I was like, what the heck? Like how? And yeah. I, I don't know. It was, just, it was crazy. I've always been the kind of person like when opportunity strikes to like grab it. And so whenever like I heard that, I was like, I mean, I can't, I can't change the fact that I have cancer. So like, I'm going to rock this. And like, mm-hmm. I still have hair and everything. I was like, y'all, I cannot wait for this head tattoo. My family's like looking at me like, what? Like, you should have diagnosed again. I'm like, I'm going to get the sickest head tattoo. I was telling them all. I was like, I'm going to do so much cool stuff. And there's like this relief of like, I don't have to work. Like, yeah. and that sounds so weird and messed up. But like, this is a conversation I've had with people a lot of like, the only way that you're able to just not work in like this country is like if you get really sick and I remember you know as being somebody who was working you know seven to seven every day being like I'm about to ball like I know I have (laughs) cancer but I'm about to chill so hard and oh my gosh it's the only way that you can like 
my job right now is supposed to be to like maintain the lowest stress level and yeah. like take care of myself as much as possible. And yeah. that's like kind of the only way that that can happen. Like yeah. where that's actually like medical and everybody's telling you like you just need to chill. Yeah. That's the only way that, that happens. So I was yeah. just really trying to be optimistic from yeah. the start. Uh so yeah. I couldn't change it. Yeah. So wow. your attitude towards this all is like <laughs> it's just it's crazy. It really like makes like oneself want to like look at like how like my attitude towards things and how I view things Yeah, because um, the fact that you are just like just so like roll with the punches like okay like guess this is next and you're just like taking like the positive route of everything that like has been thrown your way is just so freaking cool like it's just I'm like, I want to be like you. Like, it's... <laughs> I want to be, I wanna be all. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's... I, I, The fact Thank that you. we have you, like, you as a human sitting here with, like, the... Like, you know, this could, this could have happened to anyone. But the fact that it's you and it's the attitude that you have and, like, your outlook on life and the positivity that you have, it's just, like, I feel like, like we just got like so lucky. It's a little <laughs> bit delusion on my end, but like, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, yeah, I just like, it, now this is not to say that I haven't cried because I stay crying and yeah. like, and I show yeah. it on TikTok and stuff. And I know, I know some people kind of like hold the belief, like how, how can you film crying? Like, you know, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. But like, I, I just, I, I think honestly, kind of growing up, with military parents and just like kind of randomly getting told like okay we, we have to move to like a new state in two weeks i've just always had to adapt yeah. yeah and it's really crazy the kind of stuff that like a human will adapt to too like just the the amount of like flexibility you don't even know that you have yeah. i'm like speaking to like both of you directly it's crazy yeah. like you have insane untapped potential where it's just like dang like I didn't realize that I was capable of this like I didn't realize that I was capable of like just all the all all of this I I don't know you you really you surprise yourself yeah. a lot and that's a really cool thing mm. to get to see like to watch myself do but like it's also like it's it's scary and I don't I don't want to come across like I'm not afraid of anything but like because it's it's terrifying but like, I can't do anything about it. So yeah. why not like, yeah, let's have some fun with it. Yeah. You're yeah. controlling the parts of your life that you can control. Yeah, definitely. I'm trying. At what point, because I know right away they told you stage four. Mm -hmm. At what point do they use the word terminal? And what does terminal mean? Because I, I don't fully understand that. A lot of people don't. Okay. So that's, you're good. <laughs> um, so when you reach stage four cancer, um, first off, I, I didn't know that it had to go through all the other stages first. I thought that it was just like, I, I didn't really know what it was in reference to, but that it yeah. means that you were at one point stage one, wow. stage two, stage three. You said no idea. Yeah, no. Um, no, none. Like I said, I thought it was warm. Wow. So <laughs> just didn't know. And so uh, learning about the definition of stage four cancer was weird because for stage three and lower, um, you can go you can go into remission okay. and then eventually you can be deemed cancer free. When you have stage four cancer, I, at least this is to my understanding. Yeah. I get so scared that somebody's going to be like, <laughs> but um, <laughs> to my understanding. Well, you're not a doctor. So if anyone uh, right. gives you an issue. I'm like, I'm and you haven't girl. seen Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> yeah. So you're clear. Yeah. clear. yeah you're right. clear. <laughs> exactly. So um, to, to my understanding, though, uh, stage four, you can't go into remission. You can go into what's called, it's abbreviated to NED, but it's no evidence of disease, um, which just means that there's no well, it means what it sounds like there's no evidence of like active disease in your body but because you've reached that stage four point where it's like entered like your lymph nodes your body is always programmed and will always know how to make cancer so once you have a stage four diagnosis that's the crowd that will always have to be on some kind of maintenance will always have to have an oncologist for the rest of forever so Stage four, and for what I have, the idea of terminal, um, my, my oncologist kind of explained it best to me, um, 
which was that the way my tumors work, they are, it's kind of like whenever you hear a girl be like, yeah, I have really fine hair. What does that mean? She's like, a lot of it. But like, it's so little. That's mm-hmm. that's what mine is. That's what we have going on. He explained it as like lower grades of your kind of cancer are more like sugar cubes. And if you spill like a cup of sugar cubes, you can pick them up. But if you spill a cup of sugar, you're like, you can't pick up all the granules. So no matter what, I will always have cancer in my stomach. And so whether I live ideally 60 more years or my prognosis, which is, I guess I've knocked a year off now. So four years, I will, at one point, I will die with cancer still in my body. Mm-hmm. Okay. Whether that's from cancer or not, up in the air, who knows? Well, surprise for everybody. But um, I will... At, like at time of death, there will be cancer in me. And so that okay. is when I use the word terminal, it's in reference to that. So okay. we're still like, we're still trying things. Um, the, we're out of, we're out of weird, I guess, area in like m- colon cancer research right now hmm. where uh, colorectal cancers, uh, the leading cause of death in um, the leading, oh, I don't want to get my fact wrong. But it's it's like the number one cancer in like younger people now, which oh, is wow. weird. And um, so it, it's really hard to talk with doctors and to get a clear answer because whenever you say like, well, what's my prognosis? Whenever you're looking at a case study of like a stage four cancer patient or colon cancer patient, it's like older men with bad diets. Yeah. It's yeah. not like young women who like yeah. cared about eating healthy and stuff. Yeah. So... That's what all the research is on. So that, that's what they have to look at. Yeah. So like now that you have all these younger people getting late term colorectal cancer diagnoses, yeah. like there's not a lot of information on it. And it's it's weird. And like I like the number of trials and studies I've like asked to be a part of the number of like, oh, my gosh, the number this is so gross. The number of places that like have a sample of my poop because they <laughs> want to know like research yeah. stuff. It's crazy. So that's a really long answer for a very oh, short no. question. Sorry. No, but yeah, that that's what, that's what's going no, on. Yeah. Um, I explained it a lot. Yeah. So that's how uh I I identify um and like I guess d- define the concept of like terminal yeah. is that I, I will die with the cancer in my body. Right. Um yeah. Yeah I did wonder that too. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't Fully and like I mean I it I feel like terminal is kind of like uh like a, like a buzzword that people hear and um because I think like if you if you you just hear terminal you're like there's no hope for that person uh-huh. and I mean there there like not to be bleak there isn't in the terms of like I'll always have it in me yeah but life expectancy wise I mean like who who knows yeah. I'm yeah. chilling right now. I'm on a podcast <laughs> I'm, sure on, I'm in Malibu I'm, like, <laughs> I'm cool so <laughs> like, I yeah and uh that's that's another thing though that's been really kind of weird about my kind of cancer is how contained it stayed and I'm like mm. so thankful for that that like it's not in my heart not in my brain not in my lungs so yeah. like my endurance is there I'm like still active um Wow. I like with the wig, I look like a like a very just like run of the mill, like able bodied woman. Yeah. Like you you would have no clue. It's crazy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So terminal. Can, can we talk about this head tattoo? Oh yeah. Gee, is it like a proper look at it? So Wow. <laughs> it's that's, so cool. That's impressive. So yeah. um I like it's that was like the first thing I said was I'm getting the get my head tattooed. That was the first video of mine. That kind of popped off on social media. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought that was just a given, though. Like, if you have to shave your head, you should get it tattooed. But um, <laughs> I didn't even really know 100% what I wanted. I wanted something, like, happy and meaningful to me. But, like, also something, like, just, like, cool. Like, yeah. you know how, like, tough that is to, like, have a head tattoo? Like, that's yeah, crazy. for real. So, <laughs> um, my artist who had done my other pieces knew that I wanted to go to him. Um, shout out visionary tattoos in <laughs> Tampa. But um, no, he he was he was so amazing and so cool. And so I knew from the start that I wanted to get my head tattooed. And um, I just, I don't know. I just thought the sun looked sick. I loved like the 90s sun. 
I guess yeah. like if it's a podcast, if you're listening, I have a very <laughs> large like 90s style traditional sun tattooed on the back of my head. And I just liked the concept of like light and like yeah. I have sun in my name. So that's cool. I almost yeah. got, um, I don't know, we, we had thrown around like a couple ideas. Like I kind of thought it'd be funny to just get like like a horseshoe or something like a good luck kind of thing um, but I of course I love you did <laughs> I wanted to like get a slot machine at one point so that'd be so funny <laughs> um, I yeah it was that was just a, that was kind of a wild experience too it was crazy because I like having hair and knowing that you have cancer that that was a weird thing that mm. and I think that's a very um shared experience amongst cancer patients is that like this isn't like this isn't for me this is for people with cancer like yeah, yeah. you it's because you've never had to identify with that before yeah and there's this like i i think before you have cancer you kind of you when when you hear you know the word cancer you're thinking of like the saint jude's commercials yeah. the like breast cancer like pink boxing gloves and yeah. stuff and i think you as a whole cancer patients are just kind of like lumped into like this sort of like different part of society and then like whenever you i i was a fully able-bodied woman like good to go one day and the next day 100 percent disabled and like cancer it was just it, it was finding a sense of belonging was weird and like really hard but i yeah i just um the the head tattoo though just felt very like commanding on my end to be like yeah. I, I own this yeah. this is cool i love it thank Sorry. you yeah taylor and i have been traveling a lot lately and while we love going out to dinner one thing we miss the most when we are at, out traveling is cooking our own meals as you guys know, Taylor is an absolutely insane chef and I am a sous chef and I take that with much pride. Um, and I know Valentine's Day was a few weeks ago, but if your significant other is looking for a belated Valentine's Day gift, look no further than Caraway. We recently just ordered a whole new Caraway cook set and cream to match the aesthetic of our kitchen. But Caraway offers a variety of modern shades to match any design aesthetic. My favorite part is Caraway products are made without any toxic materials, which is so important to Taylor and I. They're also so easy to clean and because ceramics naturally sticks slick surface, because let's face it, dishes are definitely the worst part about cooking and dishes are pretty much always my job. So I love an easy clean. Visit carawayhome.com slash a squeeze to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive for our listeners, so visit carawayhome.com slash the squeeze or use code the squeeze at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. We all live very busy lives. And I know for me personally, the first thing that kind of goes out the door when I am having a busy week is prioritizing my personal wellness. However, we know that a big part of how you're feeling mentally has a lot to do with how you take care of yourself physically. Luckily, thanks to Allo Moves, my entire mindset around prioritizing my mental and physical health has changed. The app makes it so easy to track my wellness routine because they have everything in one place like yoga, Pilates, fitness classes, mindfulness, self-care tips, healthy recipes, and truly just so much more. Allo Moves has classes that are anywhere from five minutes to an hour long, which is my favorite because I truly have no excuse not to take a workout class, even on my busiest of days. I personally love starting my day with a 15 minute yoga class from Aloe's Guided Meditations. I've also really been loving their weighted reformer Pilates workouts when I want to get a good sweat in. Unlock your personal wellness routine with Aloe Moves. Go to alomoves.com now and use code the squeeze 30 for an exclusive 30 day free trial and enjoy 20% off an annual membership. That's alomoves.com code the squeeze 30 alamoves.com code the squeeze 30. So this new year, Taylor and I have really been striving to eat healthier. Meal prep really just get good ingredients into our body, but we have been traveling essentially every week so far um, this month. And it's been a little busy, a little crazy. That's why we've relied on Hungry Root to deliver fresh ingredients 
and snacks to our door. It helps take the hassle out of having to go to the grocery store and shop and meal prep and Hungry Root just makes it easy. They deliver all of the ingredients you need to make delicious meals. I also love them because they have snacks and I am definitely a snacky girl. Um, I love like a little carrot, snap pea, tomato with ranch type thing. Um, I'm constantly snacking throughout my day and Hungry Root has so many different kinds of snacks um, that can be delivered to your door, different varieties. Um, I've just, I have, they have great meals, but also the snacks have just been an absolute game changer for me because they have healthy ones too, which is great. And right now, you, Hungry Root is offering the Squeeze listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to hungryroot.com slash the squeeze to get 40% off your first delivery and get free veggies for life. That's hungryroot.com slash the squeeze. And don't forget to use our link so they know that we sent you. I feel like something that is very like taboo and people definitely don't talk about a lot like in society is like death and dying. Um, and that is something that you have definitely had to face yeah, girl. and have been just so open about it. What has like your experience been like having to have those end of life conversations? Great question. So um, I think like if I'm being fully honest with myself, I mean, it, it's so weird the way that the emotions kind of like come and go because oh. sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm going to go into Ned like whatever and then sometimes it's like dude like I could die of cancer that's kind of sucks and honestly though I've even before cancer I I thought about death like all the time before cancer mm. just the like mm. just the concept yeah and I like that was one of my favorite things to talk to my friends about like what do you think happens after we die like what do you like just getting everybody's different opinions on that I was always very interested in like other people's religions, that kind of stuff. And I used to have, whenever I had just graduated high school, I was like in college, um, the, the summer between high school and college, I had a friend die in a car accident. And it was a very jarring experience for me. And I was so scared. And I used to have really bad before cancer or anything, like anxiety surrounding death and losing people. And then uh, th this is going to sound like the weirdest connection to make ever. But this girl who I looked up to kind of like as in like, I, I just always thought she was cool, kind of like a role model -y figure. Like we, we weren't even really friends. I just always like kind of looked up to her, though. And um, she she turned 25 and I hadn't turned 25 yet. And I had this like weird kind of sense of like, oh, like she just turned 25 and like she's still OK. And like I'm going to turn 25, too. And like that'll be OK. And then I was like, everybody, like, so, sorry, squeeze, sorry to like get, sorry for the bad news. We're all going to die, though. Yeah. Like, not to be, I, uh, I don't want to like mess up the vibe and like get all dark and stuff. No, no. But like, it's the truth. Yeah, no, literally. Yeah, we're, just a fact. yeah, facts of life. We're, we're all terminal yeah. right now. Like, we're all on the way out. And so, like, mm. if I beat you to it, like, I'll like, I'll let you know how it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> but so the the concept of it, though, and just knowing that it's it's something that every single person is going to have to go through. Honestly, dying of cancer, while like scary and sad and like everything else. I mean, like end of life hospice care. It's kind of a nice way to go. Yeah. I mean, what you said, it's so true. Like we literally all are going to die. Like it's oh, yeah. point blank. Like that's it's so yeah, true. And, and we also have zero idea when. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's it's really interesting that, you know, we give it such like attention, you know, when cancer comes about or when like a diagnosis comes about. But like. Oh yeah, it's so like tomorrow's not promised for anyone that's one hundred percent healthy. You yeah. can, you know, yeah, something can happen for real. Like it's, anything, it's so true. It's just hearing you say that, I was like, wow, like that is that's really yeah. Which is true. a reminder, yeah. and this is why what you're doing is so powerful. Which is exactly why it's a reminder to everyone 
you know, to live the way that you are. Like it's it's just yeah. it's a fact. Like tomorrow isn't guaranteed for anyone, no matter what your life looks like. Um, so why not spend every day with the mindset that you have every single day? You are so brutally honest on social media, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where I guess where does it come from and what allows you to be that honest? And more importantly, what do you get out of it? What does that give you being able to express yourself and be like the real freaking Maddie on everything you do? Yeah. Oh, man, I love that. That's how like I'm seen for starters that that like makes me feel good that you are able to look at that and be like, yeah. this is an authentic person. Yeah. But I, I, I think just for forever, like my favorite trait in anybody is authenticity. Yeah. Like, I think that that is like the coolest thing in the world. If you can just like own what you're about and it's hard, it's a lot easier said than done. Yeah. But like whenever you meet someone and they are just like unapologetically into whatever they're into, even if it's like something that you would consider like nerdy or dorky or like whatever it is, like the the concept of like, don't, like, what is it? Like, kill the part of you that cringes not the part of you that is like mm. is cringy um honestly it was it was mostly just like i i remember filming the first few tiktoks and and that that's the platform that i'm mainly on but i i remember thinking dude what was i thinking Hang on, i can put myself back there <laughs> um oh i was i was in the hospital and I was going on TikTok a lot to try to find some representation, some girlies. And there weren't very many. Uh -huh. And especially not very many people that looked like me. Right. Like, yeah. just like very, like women in their 20s. And I just, I remember thinking, this is going to maybe sound like wrong, but like there, there's a market to be tapped into in like a, uh -huh. in a weird way. That kind of sounds messed up. But I was like, you know, I, I'm somebody who is like, I've always been very comfortable public speaking. I've always been somebody who I'm like, why, like, why are we shy about crying? Like, doesn't everybody cry? Like, right. I'll cry right now. Okay. And so <laughs> I was just never that afraid of my emotions. And I've always been very, like, ruled by my emotions, too. And so I was like, you know what? I can't work right now. And... I feel like just the like the American dream now is kind of like to become a content creator. Like you yeah. have like all these kids. Like whenever That's I asked so my kindergartners to like draw a picture of what they wanted to be when they grow up, yeah. some of them drew iPads because like they, that's what they want to do. Like they want to be the next Mr. Beast or like whatever else. Yeah. And so I I think just keeping in mind like there are I am not the only girl in a hospital bed trying to find re representation right now and knowing that like if i if i hop on here and i'm just me that if people don't like it and i don't get an audience or a response then that's like 90 percent of tiktok you know like that's yeah. like most people don't get like a big following but if i get on here and i am myself and i do get a following then that's like sick that's cool and i from the start, I just wanted to, you know, be as open with stuff as I could be. And I'm a hypocrite whenever I say that, too, because I didn't I was not open about my colostomy for a really, really long time. Mm -hmm. um, but every other aspect of my life I was. And I. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just the human experience is so cool and so I mean, like this is redundant, but like idiosyncratic where it's just like, so your own to do whatever you want with. And so getting to see what other people have done, with their human experience, being able to take that and be like, I'm going to do this with mine. And it's going to like, it's going to be me. Like it just like literally kind of like decided like, okay, like I'm, I'm the author of what's going on here. Yeah. Liberating such a like freeing feeling yeah um yeah. yeah have you ever been terrified to say something or be as honest as you want to be um you know 
being afraid of what people will think or have you ever every day every day every day but it's at the same time it's equally as like the the more that that fear increases the more that like my knowing of like it needs to be done increases yeah. i got a lot of backlash for getting my head tattooed people were like you know that's like that's so risky that's so dangerous you could risk like infection all this other stuff i didn't quit anything when yeah. i got cancer that's something that i didn't know about either and i was really i w- i wasn't concerned with we were just like really curious about like can i still drink can i still what's going to happen if i do these things yeah, yeah. and so continuing my lifestyle of being just a girly in her 20s i still go to clubs i still go to festivals i like if i'm drunk like i'll I'll, like hit a cigarette and people think that that is insane and like they're like what like that's but that's i mean like a what's it gonna do give me cancer b (laughs) (laughs) it's who i was before and um it's it's kind of interesting because like some people some people i mean they it's just so good it's so good <laughs> and i love you so much it's too good you also you need to do stand-up comedy like dude you would crush listen <laughs> the the way i have <laughs> like, I, mean, I have and i have fun with it i've only done it once but that was a good time oh my gosh <laughs> oh my um, gosh it's so- no i yeah i just i i don't know i've always coped with humor but like yeah. it's it's true though and i think um so whenever you get cancer i didn't realize this either the level of like infantilizing that comes with it everybody thinking they need to like wear kid gloves around me Mm -hmm. um and i i don't want to speak for like cancer as a whole and i'm not trying to come across as like i'm not like other cancer patients i'm a cool cancer patient but in the same breath like saying like I, I'm still going to live my life the way that, like I want to live my life despite yeah. the risks. Yeah. It like ruffles feathers a lot, but also like, what are you going to do about it? Like, yeah. I'm going to, you know, yeah. um, there there were a lot of people online uh, on like different social media apps saying like, I can't believe the way that she's continuing to live or like the the people that like she associates herself with like being around you you know being like in the festival crowd like kind of like grimy and stuff like you're gonna get an infection like the people who are genuinely worried but I was just kind of like you know if if I bubble wrap myself and I become only taking care of my cancer then it's like madison already died in that process I'm like that's not i don't want that yeah so like i yeah i just wanted to continue to do all the stuff that i was going to do and that was my mom and i had a really hard time with that for a bit um where she mm. she she had moved in with me at the beginning to kind of you know help like a mother would and uh, we, we had a hard time because she she sees me stage four cancer and she just wants to take care of me. And I see me as an at the time, like 25 year old who yeah. just like wanted to get the most that I could out of life. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I realized that like she and I were really big metaphors kind of for like both sides of like how people were viewing me. Yeah. yeah. And so kind of like having that. um relationship dynamic with my mom at the time was kind of even more reassurance for me that I that I was doing the right thing which which sounds weird but knowing that my mom was like a little bit worried about me I was like okay yeah I'm I'm doing like this is what I need to be doing yeah Yeah. I feel like always made my parents kind of bite their nails so (laughs) I'm I'm good okay (laughs) yeah that makes sense um okay I want to get into the bucket list a little yeah. bit okay got a, f- a couple questions <laughs> that i'm sure people are curious about <laughs> yeah um okay first uh it, it's just so funny because i went through and i i read you know probably i don't know a couple hundred of the comments out of the forty thousand, but out of the ones i saw just people like really care about each item that you, yeah. you had 
people yeah. are passionate about different ones in different ways. Yeah. But um, first question, why should people watch The Secret Life of Walter Mitty? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I would love to answer that. Um, <laughs> I didn't think you were going to ask about that. That's so funny. That's my opener. <laughs> um, I was like ready to like answer something hard. Um, <laughs> no. Um. So I'm... I, I'm a bit of a film girl. I, I've always been like big, big movie girl. And uh, I, I recognize that this is not the most critically acclaimed movie. And so <laughs> kind of like in the whole like whenever people ask you, what's your favorite movie? Like, how am I like, do you want me to say like, like you want me to blow smoke and say like the Godfather? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, but um, but like it just had such a good core message, such beautiful cinematography and so like how I wanted to live my life. If you have not seen it, it's essentially the concept is a, a man who's very, very stuck in the grind of life gets put in a position where he has to start like living really big and like has to start going on different adventures. And by the end of the movie, like his life has changed in such an amazing and like positive way mm -hmm. while wow. still also being like back in like the same position that he kind of was in the beginning of the movie. And uh, honestly, I just want people to hear the quote. I don't mm. want to get the quote wrong, but like the, <laughs> no, uh, it's, um, the, the whole like message of the movie, he works at life magazine. And then it's like life's motto is to see the world, things dangerous to come to, to see behind walls, draw closer, to find each other and to feel that is the purpose of life. And like, that just always stuck with me so mm. much and like how important human connection, human interaction is. And like, how important it is to be like so commanding yeah. of your own life and yeah i think that, that if sense. you like if you just need like a movie to like kind of like pick you up and like feel good yeah yeah one one comment that i um i fangirled over is gordon oh dude oh y'all have no <laughs> did you <laughs> did you freak <laughs> Because I would have freaked. Like, I oh. loved Taylor him. Taylor freaked when he was I, scrolling the comments I and saw, like, Gordon you. commented. Dude. That. It doesn't get better. No. <laughs> it doesn't. Oh, my gosh. Gordon got me through the pandemic. <laughs> I, I, what a man. Oh, what, what a man. <laughs> what a... For anybody that doesn't know, we're talking about the legend that is Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. The, like, like most Michelin stars ever. Like, a, like just this beast of a human being oh i can give you the tea <laughs> on that so whenever the tiktok got posted and i was getting all the comments i i was like dang people people are paying attention yeah and so putting gordon ramsay on the bucket list in the first place was just out of my love for food i love food and honestly once i developed a healthier relationship with food and saw it as like this like beautiful piece of like art that has mm. so much to like just like cultural and like love like so much culture love science goes into food just for something like to consume yeah I I think seeing that and seeing this man with so much passion and so much like willing to just scream in somebody's face because like they <laughs> disrespected a piece of food like a that's so true we were just watching him last night and he was got mad at do you watch next level chef yes we were just watching that the last night and he was mad at one of the contestants because they didn't they didn't let the meat rest I for long it. enough and we were like oh, yeah. oh wow yeah but no i uh i just I, I remember though during the pandemic like i got really into master chef and really into hell's kitchen and just seeing somebody with like so much passion in them was like the coolest thing ever and like i had developed this like little gordon crush and yeah, uh i get it, it yeah it, everybody has so, like so how can you Taylor. not yeah. and um i i remember though whenever i was like kind of coming up with the bucket list i was like well actually okay so in, in my household we like kind of check in with each other yearly to ask like who's your round table which is like you can have dinner with like five people or anybody there's not even really a number on it just like yeah. if you could meet up with like yeah. anybody dream whatever what are you gonna do he had always been on there for me and so when he commented because i said that like i wanted to meet gordon yeah i like 
to like I don't know, like it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it, like my body like took a screenshot. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> um, and he uh, he he made the list mostly because like I do love food so much, and I I I wanted. I don't even know what I want from this man. I don't know. Like if I just, I just want to yeah. be in the room with him. Yeah. And so he ended up, uh, he commented and he just said done. Yeah. And I was like, what does that mean? Yep. So I, okay. This is a part of my personality, my identity that I struggle with a little bit, which is the, I mean, like, like I, I rock the bald head. If you're just listening and like not looking, I stay bald. I'm not, not a bandana girl. I'm not really a, like a scarf girl, even though that is like, the flag of my people it's just <laughs> not for me yeah. rock the ball and so um I, i've met some people in the past who during those interactions it feels very make a wishy yeah and so for i was just kind of wondering like what does done mean because you come to done mm -hmm. and then uh the next day i got an email from like somebody associated with him and they were like hey girl here's a video message for you and so I'm thinking, oh, cool. Like I got like kind of like a cameo essentially from him. And yeah. that's what I thought it was going to be. Right. So I opened the video. I want to like show it to you guys. I don't know if like, that'll throw off, but like this video. So you have to think I'm like just laying in bed, like waiting for like my coffee to kick in. I see this like email. I was like, whoa. Yeah. You think it's just going to be yeah, a like, shout out. Just like, yeah, yeah nice just to like, meet you. Thanks for being a fan. For sure. Like, yeah. Thoughts are with you. Continue cooking. Yeah, yeah. It's my yeah. Gordon. Yeah. Um, and, oh, I want you guys to see it too. I don't even want to give away what it is. I just want you all to get the raw reaction too. Because I was like, <laughs> this, like, this is Beyond a generous man. Yeah. Okay. Let's see this okay. video. Here you go. Y'all just okay. press play. Oh, Oof. wow. What a yeah. guy. <laughs> what a guy. The man, the myth. Oh, yeah. Hey, Madison, it's Gordon, your favorite chef. Uh, listen, first of all, thank you for that video. And of course, uh, I'd love to see you and meet in person, but not just any hello, goodbye. Um, first of all, I'd like to fly down to Miami, um, have dinner with you and your girlfriends in uh, Hell's Kitchen. And then the following night, um, on Friday night, be our special guest uh, at the opening of our new restaurant, Lucky Cat in South Beach. Um, I'm going to get everything set up for you. Can't wait to meet you. Um, take care and lots of love. I have I, chills literally dude, everywhere right now. What did you do? Literally. literally. <laughs> but like, honestly, I would have passed then, out and I don't know if I would have come back from it. I couldn't watch it first. <laughs> like, Taylor's I like, can I get an invite so to the girls weekend? <laughs> <laughs> he did say you could bring some girlfriends. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> I like, no, I couldn't even watch it at first. Because like I said, I thought that it was just going to be like a cameo. And then I was like, in my like wildest dreams, maybe like we would get to do like a kind of like Make a wish setup where like I would go in, like it would just be like a very like. Yeah, but he's like, no, I want to chill. Like I want to get dinner with you, dude. The get way to know you and your friends, like this has been the nicest man like on the face of the planet, and he's probably gonna like kick my butt when I ask him to call me an idiot sandwich. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> he's been uh. like just what he is has in the works is crazy so he all expenses taken care of flying me and five others down to miami um and so we get to first like meet him yeah. which the reason why like i've always had this like love for gordon is like i mean like you see him like getting you know, angry and like mad at people on the show but it's because they're disrespecting the thing that he loves most which is food and yeah. like the thing that he's just like put his entire like heart and passion and career into and so just just knowing that this man can love something like that and the seeing the mentorship too like i've seen every like season of master chef yeah seeing yeah. the mentorship seeing you know a girl who was on one of the first seasons now be like his right hand like man and opening really these cares about shots. people and takes them under his yes mm -hmm. very much so mm -hmm. but to know that like he sees me as like not just like yeah. a make a wish person like he sees me as like somebody that he wants around like yeah to, like around his people that's so cool and like so kind mm. and i yeah. can't wait to 
find out what he smells like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I yeah. know Report he smells good. Yeah, I literally just I saying that. I know he time. smells good. Oh yeah, he, pro- he probably smells oh, amazing. It's just like, like aged oak and like, <laughs> like, and, oh. oh yeah. It's I'm, great. I'm so excited I for you. Yeah. I'm I, so excited. I can't it's, wait. It's going to be so fun. All right. We have a segment that we call Lemon 7, um, which is just seven random questions. Cool. You can rapid fire them, or if you feel like it needs an explanation, it's really just up to you. But I'm going to kick it off with number one. What movie or song title best describes your mental health today? Uh, scream. <laughs> okay. <laughs> scream. That's good. <laughs> just, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Fair one. enough. Um, number two is how open are you with the people in your life when you're struggling? Oh, uh, Oh, 10. <laughs> I, yeah, like I'll 10. Zero filter? Yeah, no, I'll <laughs> tell people like I, I battled with mental health for a long time before being diagnosed. And so then getting diagnosed, I was like, I, I, I knew that no matter how like raw and loud and annoying I was with like the ones who I loved, I, I lost a lot of people through this. Mm. A lot of people who like this is too much for them or like, Mm. xyz but i i the ones who have stayed yeah when i'm having a bad day 10 like i'll I'll send the yeah the send it yeah wow that's great okay number three if you could only follow three social media accounts whatever platforms but only three accounts what would they be okay let me get the let me get the names she's like gordon gordon and gordon (laughs) Girl, <laughs> the way I was about to say Taylor on or Taylor on this case, <laughs> just making sure I was getting your handles right, literally. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, three platforms that I could follow. Ooh, I, you know what? Let me give, yeah, hang on. Gotcha. Okay. I want to get their handles right too. Okay. Um, We can link them down below if they're not, if you don't say them right too. Some of them like don't even know who I am. Um, and that's fine. I would let me give you three TikTok ones because it's just like what's popping up. Perfect. Um, one, Tess Madeline. She's pregnant right now. She's like doing all this like mommy homemaking stuff. Such a cool girl, Cute. kitchen girly. She's okay. like the human embodiment of IKEA. Like just like a really <laughs> that's a fun account. Calming, yeah. like, cool person. Okay. Um, so she's at Tess Madeline okay. on TikTok. Um, if there was somebody that if I could get Every girl in the world, oh my gosh, to follow this account. Um, Georgie Jones, she's um she's from the UK and she posts um poetry and it's so so, like the most beautiful spoken poetry that I've like ever heard. And it's so just like about the like female experience. And then um Last account would probably be Hot Ones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You love the Hot Ones? That's hot a good account. Ones, no. <laughs> That's such hot a good account. Fan. So, uh, yeah. Who was, on, who was on it recently? Anyone Sydney good? Sweeney. Oh, Sydney oh, yeah. did it. Uh, that we that's how we like pre-gamed the squeeze was by drinking champagne and watching this <laughs> <laughs> like Hot Ones episode. <laughs> that's um, so good. Yeah, yeah, I would okay, say those. Those three. are three good accounts. <laughs> Some good ones. We'll have to check out Jordy Jones. Yeah, she's uh, you'll you'll like her a lot. Yeah. You will too, but you'll definitely like yeah. her a lot. Um, number four is what is your favorite form of self care? Ooh, my favorite form of self care is um, sh- ooh, shadow work. I uh, ch- like checking in on your like kind of inner demons. That's that's so scary sounding. Even before I was diagnosed, I was such a big advocate for like everybody should be in therapy. I think everybody has trauma of some extent. And that was something with my diagnosis that was so important to me and that I wanted to hold on to was the fact that everything that like you were experiencing and you're experiencing and you're experiencing is still so, so, so valid. It is so important to realize that just because like my the thing that I'm dealing with is like different and just like once you address the elephant in the room like I win the tummy ache contest here like once you can move past that and realize that like I am still rooting 
for you, like for the person I am having a conversation with. And I still want to hear about your bad days. I still want to know what's going on with your life. And it's not mundane. And it's not. I I never want anybody to feel like they can't be themselves. I'm sorry. They they can't be themselves around me just Mm -hmm. because they perceive what I'm going through as worse. Mm -hmm. When, like I said, I'm just still trying to figure out like womanhood and being in my 20s and having, you know, as silly as it sounds like the the fake friends stuff and and going through relationship struggles and just like fighting with my mom because like that's just what you do. Yeah. Those are all still such valid pieces of me. Yeah. And like since those exist in everyone, like it's equally as valid. So I think my favorite form of self-care is validating however I am feeling and checking in on why I'm feeling that way. Wow. It's like that was powerful. Yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no, that was that was so good. I and hope I, that made sense. No, made and sense. it gives so much perspective to I feel like this age that we're in of mental health and, you know, people having trauma and like, you know, just because one person's, you know, thing they're going through looks like this and this other person's maybe look less than that, it could still affect them. Yeah. You know, the we same gotta way. We got to stop comparing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think working with kids gave me a lot of that perspective because with with kids, the reason why a lot of people think kids are, you know, annoying and stuff, you know, they're crying, everything's a tantrum and stuff. They're experiencing all of these things for the first time. Whenever they spill their juice box, that's one of the first pieces of disappointment that like they're ever knowing. So like understanding like the the child is valid and having a meltdown because they've never spilled a cup. They've never broken glass before. They didn't know that's what was going to happen. And that's scary. Seeing that and knowing like it's just because you don't know that there are other things and like the, the way that other things can affect you. I mean, it's so easy to just slap the word privileged on people and say, well, you know, because you're so privileged, you don't you don't you don't know how others are hurting it's your your scope of your scope of understanding the world is while while yes you have the duty to educate yourself you don't have the control over like that scope you're born into what you're born into and so whenever you break a nail if if that's genuinely causing you anxiety and pain like it, it is. It's, it's valid. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing perspective. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, it's okay. You. It's me. Number five. What would you say is the most misunderstood thing about you? I think I'm a very, I think it's very easy to underestimate me mm. as a person. Um, I present myself very feminine and I... I don't outwardly root for myself very loudly. And so I think it's easy for others to look at me and not really, maybe I'm just projecting an insecurity right now, but I think sometimes other people look at me and they don't see anything other than my cancer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it, like this was whenever I was teaching special, I'd like see the able, not the yeah. label. Um, but I think as cancer patients in general, the number of the number of cancer patients that they are and or that there are and the number of things that like we're all still doing and the number of people that like we're not going to get to hear their stories that aren't going to get to be on the squeeze that aren't going to get to have the platform, whether it's because like they're shy or whatever else, we need more people sharing those kinds of stories and these life paths. And so I think to see somebody who like like looks like me and to like underestimate me, that's probably the most misunderstood. Yeah. Yeah. Number six. Yes. Number six is who has had the most positive impact on your mental health? Oh man, the most positive impact on my mental health. Oh, my partner mm. uh, has just been 
really good to me through all of this. And he takes the the what's that expression? The brunt of it? Brunt. Yeah, yeah. is it brunt? That doesn't yeah. feel like a word. I know. <laughs> but he I know. Takes... Like who uses brunt yeah. outside of that one expression? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. For real. <laughs> he takes the brunt but of he it. Does. Yeah. He takes he takes the brunt of a lot of it. Um and I I think he he he's never seen me as less. Like he's only seen me as more beautiful and is more like confident in I'm who he wants to be with. And seeing somebody else see me like that, like that's been so special. And my dog, because like he just doesn't know what's mm. going on. He just loves his mom. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I'm a weenie mama. So. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Yes. Yeah, his name is Jar Jar after. Binks. No. <laughs> <laughs> Love that guy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah. Last but not least, number seven. Wait. Yeah. And my therapist. Shout okay. out, shout out, shout out Dr. Melina Scally. Because okay. I like she lets me text her. That's why. Like we do <laughs> we do this kind of therapy where like if I'm like struggling in the moment with a situation, oh. she has a line set up where it's not her phone, but like I just text her and I'm like, oh. how do I handle this? And like we yeah. like work through options. So Jeez. shout out her too. Let That's me like great. not act like I'm doing it on my own. We I have a That's really amazing. good psychologist. Oh. <laughs> so she's impacted the mental health a bit. Major shout out. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Okay, number seven. If you could go back to one moment in your life, what moment would that be? And what would you say to yourself? I would go back. I'm, I'm definitely going to cry. Anytime I think, I was actually just having this conversation. My best friend's in the room with us too. And she and I were having this conversation uh, yesterday about how I, I do this thing randomly where I, I try, and this could be a load of crap. It could not be real at all. And that's fine. I can just be living in like la la land. Mm-hmm. But I do this thing where whenever I when I think about it, whenever it pops into my head, I try to send my past self love and grace and like a hug. I'll like try to I'm not the best at meditating. I don't really know much about it. I don't even know if I'm doing it right. But I will really try to like channel my inner child a lot and to just let her know. That like we we we've made it to here. Like you're gonna be okay. And even now, as I'm going through things, anytime I feel like just like a random wave of like peace or like clarity or comfortability, I'm like, dang, like future me is definitely sending me something right now. That sounds insane, maybe. But Mm -hmm. like, so I think if I could go back to like anyone, I would probably go back to middle school to this girl who you know all all my friends were still thin I was like on the heavier side acne just like like in like like Bo Burnham's eighth grade like in the thick of it and I would tell her that like she is so beautiful and she is so strong and she is so funny and she's going to become the older sister that she wanted so badly to have and I think I wouldn't spoil anything about my path either I I I feel like the answer to this would maybe be to go back and tell the girl at Bonnaroo hey go get it go get a scan right but uh Bethany Hamilton whenever she whenever she lost her arm in the shark attack one of the the things that she was quoted saying was she was so grateful for that shark attack because she was able to embrace way more people than she ever could have with two arms. Mm. And so to know that I did not choose cancer, I didn't choose to be part of medical discourse, I didn't choose to enter this world or to take up space in the disabled community, but to know that, like, I am and I'm holding my own. I think I would just like tell myself like you're going to get there. Like you are going to get to the place where you know that you're beautiful. You know that you're cool. You made two really successful podcast hosts laugh. They think you're funny. Like you're a cool girl. And that's like why my bio on TikTok is stage four cool girl. Because (laughs) I just, yeah, I would give her a hug. I, oh. Like, how amazing would that be to, like, give, like, 
young yeah. Taylor a hug whenever yeah. she was like in the trenches of whatever. Yeah. yeah. I, I hope you know like what I'm pick, like picking oh, yeah. up what I'm putting down. But, yeah. Like, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Abs- absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to speak for you here, but I think you're going to agree that I think this has been truly just like the most special and life giving and perspective placing and just most amazing like episode we've had (laughs) i don't know i'm just looking at you yeah no i agree i i yeah when we started this podcast and i mean we've said this before but i've never meant it more than i do right now when we started this podcast we never dreamed of having people like you on um that make the impact that you do on this planet and to so many different people um like this is a dream come true for us to be able to do this and have have you sitting across from us i mean i just in the last hour and a half that we've spent together i've learned so much from you and so many things i want to implement into my life and i know that you do that for many more people than just me so thank you yeah that's so kind. Like that's so nice. Thank you so much. I like it. I don't know. Life's life's wild. Life's crazy. Like the fact that we're just like all in this room together right now. Like we all like made all these like different choices. And now we're in the room together. It's yeah. just like such a crazy thing. And like, yeah. If I could like say one more thing too, I remember the other day I was so overwhelmed. I was texting my friend, my friend Mike, who just like. He's just like one of those people that seems to have life like figured out. Like he just is always chilling. He's always like so happy. And I was like, Mike, how like how are you just like not overwhelmed with stuff? He was like, dude, like life's supposed to be fun. Like lean into it. And whenever like I started seeing that and like just trying to like lean into everything and leaning into like seeing how people interact and stuff, like like just being able to witness like the amount of love that like you two have for each other, like watching the two of you and like your physical touch and stuff. And, like, bearing witness to such beautiful things and to, like, being able to, like, like, in, like, my peripheral, see, like, this crew that's, like, helping you and, like, have, like, you've made your life choices to, like, be here, too. Like, I think just, like, noticing all of these different things allows you to to be in these positions where, like, you do feel good a lot more of the time. And, like, I think continuing to humanize and to lean into people and that's like what your podcast is doing like you're humanizing so many people that that don't that don't get that a lot I mean like I like I had in prep for this I was listening to um the the episode that you just did with your sister and like the just never even really considering that aspect of life like what it would be like kind of growing up in the shadow of somebody maybe and to the fact that you're giving this like light and this platform to people who otherwise might not have it like that's like you guys are so full of like love and kindness that's such a cool thing so like thank you guys like you're really 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 cool people (laughs) yeah yeah we are just honored to be the microphone for you to share your story and to share your wisdom so thanks for joining us on this quiz so fun This podcast has been brought to you by Podcast Nation.